So this is really blown up in the past few days. Um, mm-hmm. This is via the Kiev Independent. Uh, 10,000 North Korean troops sent to the front line to uh, presumably, um, you know, uh, defile and impurify the, the white race. No, I kid. Um, mm. So uh, <laughs> according to the Kiev Independent citing, <laughs> according to the Kiev Independent citing Western sources, Western diplomatic source allegedly in the know, uh, what's their wording here? Uh, a diplomat familiar with the matter, uh, North Korea has sent 10,000 troops to the front line to fight with Russia against Ukraine. Um, so this is like, uh, this is, I mean, this has been repeated everywhere. I believe mm. Kiev independent is the only one to put a number to it. Um, but yeah. in typical New York, why not a million? Fashion, why they, not a million? Uh, they covered this. <laughs> it could be 2 million. Why not five? Million. <laughs> up up to two million. I mean, just 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 really just really quick. I might add as well that I mean, this is this is a gag. But uh, when the UN published this much um, vaunted report on the um, number of 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 Uyghurs who were allegedly um, forced into labor camps, it said anything between ten thousand and two million people. Um, I mean, it's like it was, right. it was that imprecise, um, right. according to some calculations. So I mean, I think yeah, the, the and it's also. It's. It, I think that we've kind of discussed this on the show before, but there's been this kind of long running. It's been going on for almost. I th- I'd say it was about a year now because North Korea has been providing um, Russia with um, uh, ammunition because they have a huge um, armaments um, um, industry and they're very innovative um, in terms of what they make because, hey, um, the US tried to genocide them in the 50s along with Britain. Um, And so as a result, um, they are extremely wary of people not coming in peace to their borders. Now, um, this has gained a kind of almost mythical quality in the media where there's a lot of... uh, the, The title of my website, Global delinquents is taken from this Guardian report on um, Putin and Kim Jong-un's um, uh, quote-unquote bromance and there was this picture of them uh, of the pair kind of driving seeming to have a very good time they were like smiling together cracking jokes and the, and the Guardian was like building this up as like super sinister like it's like, like oh my Christ uh, these yeah, like these two lunatics, these two delinquents, are now uh, have now joined forces. Um, what what's going to happen to us? Um, I mean, bearing in mind that like North Korea was already like built up as this international pariah, and of course, there's an enormous amount of just complete and utter garbage about what kind of country um, North Korea is and what they do to dissenters and all this other stuff, which is just completely false. Um, so it's like. It, they're trying to make North Korea sinister again when it, they, they've been made to be so sinister it's almost comical anyway. You well, know? It's, it is quite comical. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you've seen reports in the mainstream media over the years that North Korea announced they discovered a unicorn that was based off of a mistranslation. You have an entire industry of uh, of mm. uh, of defectors telling their stories at, mm. um, at, at preferable rate. Like, like so... When a North when a North Korean defects to the South, they get paid mm. to offer their stories about what's going on in North Korea because there's an yeah. I- information blockade, right? So they get paid more. They get more interviews with the United Nations, with you know South Korean dailies, yeah. um, based off of how salacious their stories are. So it leads to an entire industry mm. around fake news. Um, you have yeah. all the it's time. Kind of, it's kind of a, every sorry. every few years, a, a, a North Korean military official is claimed to have been killed by Kim Jong Un, ordered personally mm-hmm. by him, and then he shows up at an opera hall on you yeah. know on, on very much alive. Days. Yeah. Well, so, I, mean, I think as well ahead. that just to, sorry, just really quickly that like I I would encourage everyone to read this. There is a um, a South Korean academic who started off. Uh, uh, sorry, her name's uh, Yi Young Song, um, and she wrote this excellent article, which was republished in the Guardian of all places, called "Why Did North Korea Defect a Testimony So Often Fall Apart?" And she basically lays out exactly what Alex has just said, um, and she talks about how she kind of actually cut her academic teeth speaking to defectors, and then she very, very quickly 
determined that these people were telling false stories, which had often been they'd often been kind of groomed and trained in how to speak to the media by the South Korean intelligence services and the CIA. And they gave completely crazy stories because there are ideological, political and financial incentives for them to do so. And there is a media that will report whatever bullshit comes out of their mouth without scrutiny. And I think the same very much applies to all of the um, the quote unquote um, yin yang um, survivors, as they like to refer to themselves. Um, you know, people who were in many cases committed or planned or in, in, endorsed very serious crimes who got a second chance and got you know, language and vocational training for six months, um, quite some genocide. But the, I mean, yeah, that it, 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 the, the, there is a massive industry um, uh, of, and, uh, of, of, sorry, there is a massive industry in de false defector testimony, not just North Korea, but like pretty much anywhere. Um, and these people know that they will get very rich and will not be challenged in any serious way. Um, so yeah, that 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 piece is well worth reading because it tracks how so often these pe these people who have very lurid tales to tell of life behind the North Korean curtain um, are just liars. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that so that's the backdrop for what's what's going on now. And I mean, they're kind of uh, exporting this uh, this fake news industry from North Korea to Russia through this story. So the New York Times, so again, the Kiev Post uh, claims 10,000 North Korean soldiers. Uh, that's mm -hmm. on October 15th. Uh, the next day, the New York Times publishes this article um, noting that, um, that in re so it goes all the way, all the way down. We go this far yeah. into the article before we get when most people have stopped reading most people have stopped reading by this point right so yeah here we go so here we go both moscow and pyongyang have denied engaging in armed shipments from north korea russia has also called reports that north korean troops were fighting alongside its troops quote another fake news story in recent weeks ukrainian officials and news media have increasingly reported such accusations without providing photographic or other evidence Ding ding ding. Okay. I mean, um, so can I just like can I just can I just cut can I just twenty five? Sorry, sure, I, I, oh yeah, I didn't mean to cut. I didn't, didn't mean to cut you off, dude. But like, yeah, but I just think it's important to note as well that like you got to bear in mind that the the one of the reasons that the the the, the kind of the pace of Russia's progress in in the war in Ukraine, although they're making some very significant gains lately, as the front line just totally collapses, that one of the reasons it's been so slow is that the the Ukraine. Um, and um, and Russia doesn't uses these too, but Ukraine has like this swarm of drones that monitor everything in real time. So if there were actually any North Korean soldiers on the front line in Ukraine, it would be very easy to to capture footage or photos of them because there is a swarm of drones in the sky at any one time monitoring all movements of 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 everyone involved in the in the fight. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's complete. It's completely farcical. I mean, and yeah, I mean, you you noted that Kiev Post was the only outlet to uh, lend the number to this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say active measures calls it at seven billion North Korean soldiers are now in Ukraine, which well, is hiding like, very it's well. Like that that Team America <laughs> joke, you know, it's like it was like nine eleven times a thousand. <laughs> you are but, you are seventeen percent. Right. More pro, more pro Kiev. Watching a Yomi Pak interview for an hour. <laughs> so, so, so Zelensky got got in on this. Uh, he, uh, in in you know, his um, through all his media training, he realized that this is the uh, this is the the story beat he needs to hit. Um, and he said, "We see an increasing alliance between Russia and regimes like North Korea." He said on Sunday, it is no longer just about transfer weapons. It is actually about transferring people from North Korea to the occupying military forces. So this has caused a massive freak out among the chicken hawks of uh, pro NATO Twitter. Um, we have Drew Pavlo, who says North Korean troops are currently invading a country in Europe alongside Russia and the entire Western world Good. is in a coma with zero consequences. Um, yeah. St. Javelin, which is a uh, NAFO aligned outfit 
uh, they, they said, oh, no big deal. It's just North Korea invading Europe. Time to get back to the <laughs> office and plan the next conference where we will be planning to be will begin for the plan on how we will not offend the new axis of evil. I love these like hip young people that like use dog memes, but also terms like axis of evil. Mm. Um, oh yeah. So as, as some outlets with uh, a track record of post, uh, of closely, you know, reporting the truth uh, studiously, of course, um, Newsweek has uh, come out with this report. North Korean troops deserting Ukraine front line at, uh, days after arrival. So allegedly 18 North Korean soldiers have deserted the front line. Um, who is this according to? This is according to a public broadcasting company of Ukraine, uh, which cited intelligence officials, unnamed, of course. Um, so you have all of this that's come out really since uh, yesterday, since the Kiev Independent article. But I was, mm -hmm. I decided that it would be a good idea to dig a little bit deeper. Um, and what do you know? Just four days before the Kiev Independent article or the Kiev Post article, you have this paper, this this commentary published in Rand. Rand is, of course, a uh, think tank that is uh, funded by the U.S. government, and I don't just say funded by the U.S. government as in like the you know fucking u.s embassy in seoul uh, contributed a thousand dollars in you know fiscal year 2015 uh no rand is funded entirely pretty much like almost entirely by the u.s government various um uh, uh, you know the chief of the army office it's mainly you know, the pentagon uh, it's mainly the pentagon it's mainly the pentagon and it's I think the pentagon that, like, it's yeah. A, yeah it's important to note that like Rand, like, that, I think we've discussed this on the show before, but it bears repeating that, like, literally, if you want to know what the US is going to do in about six months time, read Rand's website, because all they, they publish a wide variety of reports on all manner of topics. Um, more often than not, their recommendations get adopted as policy. Um, there was a 2009 Rand report that basically called for the US to... <clears throat> Um, foment a Sunni and Shia war in the Middle East in order to prevent Ir Iraq's oil resources falling, falling into Iran's hands and, and Iran's uh, in regional influence growing. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it advocated supporting um, uh, extremist uh, Salafist groups. Um, uh, and then the Pentagon duly did this. And then you have the creation of ISIS. Um, you know, yeah. uh, so it's, it's like uh, th there are many, many examples of this. Yeah, it's it's not always so interesting. A lot of what Rand does is like talk about how, um, you know, the Navy can uh, treat its neurodivergent uh, sailors better, you know. Yeah. But this one <laughs> is interesting. Uh, this, we again, swear. just four days before the Kiev, in, uh, Kiev Post article, uh, talks about this relationship between Russia and North Korea and advises the U.S. government, the U.S. should be mounting a major information operation against Russia, China, and North Korea to highlight their differences and fuel distrust among them. So is that what we're seeing just four days later, a disinformation campaign? Um I just want to I want to take a moment and, and and read this because it's so blatant. And and again, this is like the US government is constantly accusing Russia of trying to quote sow discord with quote disinformation. What we're doing, of course, is we are having information operations to fuel distrust. It's 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 uh again, like I said the last episode, the family guy meme where where they got the skin tones but it's the russian flag um yeah given the differences in objectives of russia china and north korea the united states should be mounting in major information oper operations against these three countries to highlight their differences and fuel distrust against them among them again 18 north korean defectors in, <laughs> in, on the front <laughs> lines uh just four days later uh doing so would increase the likelihood of decoupling at least some of their partnerships some examples of potential information operations seem obvious. With China, it is important to publicly declare that China seeks dominance in Northeast Asia and beyond. The United States should call attention to how North Korea's close cooperation with Russia defies Chinese do dominance, making China unhappy. 
Oh. In addition, North Korea regularly threatens <laughs> to use nuclear weapons, which could ignite nuclear war in the region. This is likely why Chinese leader Xi Jinping has said that he will not permit war or chaos on the Korean peninsula. Information operations could sensitize Chinese leaders and people to these threats, inducing China to pressure North Korea to rein in its nuclear weapons productions, its provocations, and its threats to use nuclear weapons. Information operations are also possible against Russia and North Korea. For example, media stories could tell the Russian people that North Korea has sent a significant number of dilapidated artillery and other mun munitions to Russia that have been causing Russian casualties. What the North Korean elites have likely been reassured by the food and economic resources that Russia has been providing, the media could explain that North Korea has been apparently exhausting its available munition supplies, such as Russian payments to North Korea will likely be declining significantly in the coming years. In addition, the United States should recognize that North Korean military advisors are supporting Russia, Russian use of North Korean military supplies in occupied areas of Ukraine. This is a very poorly written article. I'm not just... Yeah messing up my words i am but uh yeah. it's 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 got some well, I mean, they, very they, strange they rushed, phrasing they, they clearly rushed it out in advance of this it's like oh shit we've got to like <laughs> we've got we've got to publish the uh the discussion of uh, the proposal document before we actually do this yeah i mean right. also i mean just 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 more generally as well is that like it has been a re recurrent theme and and it's interesting i mean there, there was enough there was a there was a it, it's very clear that there are elements of the british and american um, military intelligence um, uh, apparatus, um, an oxymoron, um, if ever there was one, that genuinely think that there is like a, a cat in hell's chance that they are going to prize apart China and Russia. These countries are like joined at the hip. The sanctions on Russia um, uh, uh, rang the bells at their wedding. OK, um, like uh, there was a Rand report at the start of last year, which basically laid out a blueprint for the US getting the hell out of Dodge in Ukraine. It was called Avoiding a Long War. And it, it talked about how, um, well, the longer the war in Ukraine goes on, it's actually very bad for the empire and its international vassals. I mean, you know, the sanctions are destroying European Europe's economies. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, the, and, and it stated another reason that we shouldn't allow the proxy war to carry on too long is because there is a risk of China and Russia being pushed closer together. And it's like, again, I mean, talk <laughs> about clo closing the, the stable door long after the, the 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 horse has bolted like i mean yeah the, the the china and russia relationship has redefined the world it will continue to do so there is zero i mean you know there we've seen the the, the footage of xi fl flying into um uh to moscow to meet with putin you know very warm the kind of fraternal cam camaraderie uh they talk about bringing uh changes the world hasn't seen in centuries together um they speak very warmly um i don't think some bullshit propaganda which is advertised in advance by rand corporation is going to make xi jinping go oh actually um well no we should probably just dump this and throw in with the west again yeah. uh, or it's like that there was like that that prank call that we played on on I was it the week before last show of uh, uh, like when Mike Pompeo got got stung by these these two um uh, prolific Russian pranksters um who pretended they were um African leaders and uh, they just they they spoke with Mike Pompeo off or he thought he, this was off record and he was talking about how oh well you know we need to um uh the, the war in Ukraine has been a disaster and we need to try and bring Russia back into the western fold and this is after two and a half years of like genocidal statements issuing from european and, and, and north american capitals um all manner of of fiery incendiary rhetoric encouraging ukraine to strike russia and it's like you really think that that like uh, trying to approach them diplomatically again when um uh western officials have boasted about lying <laughs> um, uh, to the russians in their dealings with them that you, you think that they're going you're we, we, they're going to be wooed back no it's not going to happen again it's important to note how delusional these people are because they have power yeah and they're insane yeah i think we should move on to the, this 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 victory plan sure Alex. sure but uh you know you guys heard it here first 10 trillion North Korean soldiers yeah. on the front line. Absolutely. 10 trillion. Absolutely. The bit, um, I mean, Kim, Kim Jong-un Kim Jong -un is, is there himself. <laughs> like, like he's riding around in a tank with Putin and they're laughing maniacally. 
sending and, and he, these, these trillions of soldiers into battle. And he's executing yeah. any of them which don't get the same haircut as him. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But but not the defectors. Strangely, they've gotten he's, away with he, it. He, he's he's <laughs> strapping them to uh, captured attackums. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tie me to a missile and fire it at Tel Aviv. I am ready. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.